The experience of travel, just travel, in the absence of faith, God, church, where we just travel, just going into a village in Vanuatu, going into a village in the foothills in the Himalayas, and going to Beijing, going to California, wherever it is, is wonderful. It does something. It does something to all of us to actually get out of our comfort zone and to get get in amongst um, other people's ideas of what it is to be human and who the hell we are. I mean, I thought, well, I'll make this little series. It was just a little series called The Battle for Britain's Soul. We were looking at the spiritual history of these wonderful islands uh, that we live on. And um, I thought that would be it. I thought it would be panned by the critics, and that would be it. I had no idea that what was to come would have been really the ride of my life. Uh, I would visit over 60 countries, and one year alone I visited 46 countries, uh, filming around the world in 80 days. Um, just an extraordinary experience. Um, suffice to say, I'm not an academic. I'm not a theologian. I'm a parish priest who just happens to have had uh, these wonderful, extraordinary experiences. All ancient religions, all religions that have been around, let's say, for more than 500 years, um, struggle desperately with change. Part of that is um, a degree of institutionalized arrogance. Uh, there's no other way of saying it. And part of that is the fact that some of them consider you know, because we have all these temples, because we have all of these mosques, because we have these cathedrals and churches, we have a right to be here. None of us have a right to be here. Um, and I think it's really in the inability for established religions to embrace change um, is really evidence that they become a bit stuck. Uh, they're believing a bit much, uh, too much in their own PR and simply lose the ability to really engage. I think, I think what we see up at St. Paul's Cathedral, what's happening now is really, you know, sadly, a testament to this. Here you have one of the great institutions of the English church camped outside it, are a group of people that just doesn't know how to talk to, doesn't know how to communicate with. That's not just the Church of England. This, I've seen this around the world with many established religions, they sort of <clears throat> tend to become more and more complacent, I think, um, in their, um, they, they tend to become more complacent in their willingness to engage what they find difficult with. Uh, because they think that, well, we've been here for 700 years, we have the right to, to say things as we want to. And I think, this unwillingness to engage in what they find difficult is um, largely stops them being real and fluid and uh, really in, in the now. On that, do you think religion is going to continue in England or do you think it's going to change in some way? Oh, I think religion will continue in England, but I think it will it'll change, it'll ebb, it'll flow, it'll morph, it'll remorph, it'll... Um, but that's what makes it so exciting. Um, you know, we see it as, you know, we do see it as static because, you know, it's been around for so long and churches are so old and they're full of these, you know, old, gracious stones. Um, but no, it'll move. Can it'll, I ask one last question? Yeah, sure. Um, a lot of the questions today have been about resistance from other religions to what you've been doing. Oh, yeah. And I was wondering, have you found any resistance within your own church? Uh, so the life you've led, the choices you've made, yeah. or the uh, experiences you've had. I have to say that from my own church, the Church, the church of England is a remarkably uh, tolerant community. Um, and no, I've found no resistance at all. Um, it's complete silence, but no resistance. Thank you so much. <laughs>